Yes, hello everyone and welcome to our today's live demo on our solution, Seamless Agent. My name is Baran and I'm the marketing manager here at Sestec. I have with me my dear friend, Anil. He's a Welcome, Anil. Thank you, Baran. Thanks for everyone joining. Yes, we want to thank you for your interest in our uh, live demo today. So let's quickly go to this agenda. Again, we have just a couple of slides for you to put things into perspective, just to warm things up. We're going to uh, we need this solution called uh, Seamless Agent. It is a collaboration tool between uh, contact center agents and uh, machines such as uh, chatbots or speech enabled IVRs. So uh, how this affects the customer experience overall, but we promise this will not take more than five minutes. And for the rest of today, Anil's gonna uh, demonstrate an incident uh, where th there's a friction in the interaction between a customer and a chatbot and how human interventions by using our tool called Seamless Agent. Uh, again, we want to remind you at any time, if you have any questions, please use the uh, chat box here and I will uh, guide them to uh, Anil. Uh, and if you have any recommendations for us uh, after this webinar, uh, what do you guys want to see? You want to see live demos or you want to maybe get some uh, ideas from our founders or our customers? You want to... Uh, talk about business cases, uh, please let us know at the uh, at this chat. So Anil, uh, I'm gonna give the mic to you. Okay, thank you so much, Baran, for the lovely introduction. So welcome one more time, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, so let's just put some context to our webinar, okay? So today we are gonna be talking about seamless agents and uh, you know what that is or how that works, we are gonna come to that. But just to give you a general idea, you know, uh, we are providing solutions around natural dialogue, you know, interaction between humans and, you know, uh, smart applications. This can be an IVR, this can be a mobile application or simply a chatbot where the humans are interacting, you know, with an AI component. So I'm sure there are uh, actually a lot of uh, different chatbots out there that maybe you had, you know, interactions in the past where the conversation got stuck, right? So, uh, and those are the situations where you start thinking if this chatbot or if this, you know, uh, conversational AI service is you know uh, giving you the best experience so let's take a look at one of the examples so let's say a customer is trying to get help with uh, his or her existing order you know and they want to interact in their own way so they are actually uh, you know given options uh, you know for their orders orders whether it's a phone or any other electronic appliance and when they said headphones uh, the chatbot didn't understand it because you know it was inside uh, not inside its dialogue flow right so then uh, how actually uh, should we design these chatbots so that uh, our customers get the most out of it uh, without compromising their experiences? So according to a, a research that uh, we actually, you know, got this slide from or the information. Now, the chatbots start with informational or basic question and answers. And uh, while you have that uh, Q&A bot, you know, its understanding can still be in the preliminary levels. And the engagement complexity uh, with the backend systems, with the actual systems is still minimal. So uh, then it goes to a personalized stage where there are some additional data about the customers, such as their CRM data, their age, their, you know, gender. Then, you know, the chatbot has a more, you know, uh, informed answers to those uh, people. So now the customer experience becomes a little bit more important there. And then the final stage is transactional, right? Where the people are following uh, self-service uh, transactions such as paying their bill, getting their credit card information, you know, and at that step, 
the customer experience is highly, highly important because, you know, we need a lot of focus there uh, and we need a lot of information about the customer. So this is just like a summary of the chatbot today and how the customer experience is being, uh, you know, uh, given importance. So Baran, is there a question or, uh, I mean, if there are any questions, feel free to stop me. I don't see the chat, you know, window here, but, you know, be my guide. Yeah. One of our participants are having a hard time hearing us. Okay. But yeah, I think the, it's a problem on their side. So I will, uh, I'm going to write back to her. So please okay. continue. Okay. Sure. All right. Now, uh, chatbots.org actually asked 3,000 people, you know, in the US and UK, uh, what their biggest pain points using the chatbots are, right? Okay, so 22% of them said the chatbot is not intelligent enough, all right? 32% said the, the chatbot got stuck at a point, you know, and then they didn't know what to do or the chatbot didn't know what to do. So uh, this is very relevant to today's actually webinar, the live demo. And then the majority of these people said that when they're transferred to a human agent, there is no history of the conversation that is being transferred to the agent. So they have to start over, you know, to, to tell their stories to a human agent. So that's the biggest problem. And then there is the 9% of others, you know, in that category. So uh, we need to be focusing on that, you know, 59% and 33, 32%, which will make, you know, uh, easily over 80% of the problems with the chatbot. So 80, 20 rule is, uh, you know, valid here. And if you remember our previous presentations, you know, these are the dilemmas that our customers are facing, you know, in today's world. And the one that kind of stands out is the customer experience, right? So you're trying to bring a chatbot service or a speech enabled IVR service, a conversational AI platform, you know, just to increase the automation. But while you're doing it, are you really paying attention to the customer experience or not? You know, this is the biggest dilemma that we see in our customers today. So hopefully at the end of today's webinar, you'll leave here with some ideas how to overcome this dilemma, how to actually uh, make your chat service or conversational service smarter, you know, with the solution that we call seamless agent. Okay, so the, before I jump into the live demo, I'm just gonna explain the situation, okay? How the Seamless Agent is helping. First of all, Seamless Agent is a patented technology by Sestec, right? And it's not live chat. So let's try to separate Seamless Agent from live chat. The only common thing between Seamless Agent and live chat is that there are real people interacting you know, with the customers. In live chat, as you know, you're actually chatting with a real person, you know, just like you're talking to them on the phone or, you know, uh, you're, you know, face to face. In Seamless Agents, you're actually chatting with an uh, intelligent service, whether it's an IVR service or a chatbot service, you know, but sometimes the conversation may get stuck or the bot, uh, you know, doesn't understand you. During those short moments, a human can intervene and save the day you know, just, you know, <laughs> kind of an example here, you know, but uh, the customer doesn't even realize that a real person intervened and they actually kind of uh, put the conversation in the right path, all right? So let's go through the four steps here. I'm the customer, I'm engaging with the chatbot, you know, let's say this is a bank, all right? And they are providing a chat service on their web uh, website. And then, uh, I ask something, but the chatbot doesn't understand. So it's struggling. So it's giving me either, you know, no answer or answers that are not relevant to what I'm asking. All right. And then here, uh, our technology actually helps, you know, the chatbot by inviting a real person into the conversation, you know, for a short period of time where the real human can make a decision and then route the conversation so that the customer receives the response in the fourth step, you know, and they didn't even realize, you know, what, what's going on in the background. So they think the chatbot is giving them the answer. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Clara. because the, the chatbot is actually, and actually the agent is giving the answer, but it goes through the chatbot 
and uh, before the customer realizes that uh, there is an intervention there mm -hmm. uh, there is a smoothless uh, seamless experience there yeah exactly exactly and this is just you know uh, we will come to the benefits later but this is just the flow that you're going to be seeing today okay. so any questions before i jump into the live demo no okay perfect not. all right so uh let's go to our little application here you know Maybe I can just minimize this one and just keep that one on the screen. Okay, guys. So just think about this, the chat service that I was mentioning earlier, the bank's chat service, okay? So let's interact with this uh, chatbot. So I say, hi, you know, everything is good. How can I help you? I said, you know, uh, I want to actually apply for a loan. Okay, oops, the chatbot, kind of asking me, do I mean loan calculator, which I'm not, you know, or loan application, you know, and I already said it's a loan application. So there's certainly something going on here. So I'm going to just repeat myself. You know, I said, I want to get loan and I'm not going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you are actually, you know, as a customer, what you want and, uh, Obviously, there is with the decision uh, flow of the chatbot yeah. that yeah. is not understanding your intention. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to give it one more chance, right? Oh, my God. So the chatbot is stuck. So I am the customer. I want to apply for a loan. So this bank is losing customer here, losing money, basically, because that I'm going to be giving up, you know, using this chatbot service. If I really need this loan, of course, there are other channels. But, you know, I thought chatbot would be the easiest without speaking to a live agent. I could simply go on to my application. But no, the chatbot doesn't let me do that. Right. OK. OK. So uh, I just quit this chat. Right. So uh, and now let's go and actually activate seamless agent all right so i'm just going to be starting the chat service again all right all right so loan application okay let's say it's still the same i said i want to get loan okay you idiot let's you know insult the chatbot a little bit that's what you know the real customers do all right <laughs> in real in <laughs> real life example okay yeah. so in this scenario before i hit enter I'm going to go our, onto our natural dialog platform, all right? So this is the one that maybe some of you are familiar because you're our existing, you know, partner, customer. But if you're not, you know, this is our natural dialog platform. This is where you actually define the dialog flow of your chat or conversational AI, whether it's an IVR product or it's a chat service, you know, this is the UI that is being used. And here I'm logged in as myself. And there is a little button on the left hand side that says agent screen. So I click on it. Okay. So now I am the human agent that my chatbot actually needs me, you know. So I'm mm -hmm. on break as default, but let's make myself available. All right. As soon as I make that, it says a little information saying waiting for a new recognition request from the system. All right. So I myself is acting as an agent here. All right, and I'm waiting for new requests coming. So this time, please watch closely. I'm gonna say final chance here, okay? And I got, you know, this screen where, you know, there's a timer at the right-hand side that's, you know, counts from 20 seconds. And there are two menus, loan calculator and loan application. And I know it's a loan application because I see I want to get loan and I hit okay. And as you can see, I kind of changed the direction of the conversation to a loan application. So the chatbot actually gave the correct answer. Okay. So the only thing the customer maybe realized is that it took 20 seconds, but this is just for the purely for the demo purposes. Usually mm -hmm. the agents are doing, you know, a much better job, you know, because the system is giving them an option, you know, bringing the uh, two most possible menus or, you know, in the dialogue flow uh, branches that uh, this, you know, request can be related to. And mm -hmm. I, as an agent, picked the one 
that is the relevant because you know i see the history here you know the the, the customer said i want to get loan it's nothing related with loan calculator Okay, it's a loan application. So clearly there is something going on in my chat logic as well. We are gonna come here, but this is basically how the seamless agent is being used. So this is a, now a live example that a chat bot cannot decide on the uh, decision flow. It's hitting multiple uh, selections. Mm -hmm. And because it's not sure, it's not replying back to the customer, but it is actually warning the, the agent that it needs assistance. Yeah, it needs a, a assistance of choice, so that the live agent can make the correct choice. But by doing the uh, uh, canceling out mm -hmm. the irrelevant uh, decision flow. Yes, exactly, exactly. So uh, let's put myself on break. You know, so the chatbot can actually take it over from here. So if the guy is, you know, the customer is actually applying for a personal, you know, loan, then the flow is just the same, right? So then, you know, they, they just, you know, keep going with the same service. All mm -hmm. right. So, so that's what uh, we call it seamless. So yeah, the exactly. conversation goes on seamless. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, I didn't lose business this time with the help of a real agent, you know, uh, but there's clearly a, a logic error in my dialogue flow that I need to fix. And how do I do that? You know, I think this is more important because in the long to run, you know, you want to actually ace your dialogue flow. But if you're a large bank with a lot of transactions, a lot of uh, different, you know, uh, possibilities, uh, you know, it's okay to make some errors. It's okay. But if you can fix them quickly, then it's even better, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at our platform here. Now, this platform, I said, you can design the dialogue flow, but also is used for a reporting, you know, uh, kind of an UI. So I'm gonna picking the decision flow that we were using earlier in my example, which is banking English. And let's so say, now, Anil, yeah. as an agent, now you are trying to uh, correct the, the there is a uh, there is a mistake and that there is an uh, inaccuracy in the flow. So you are you are yeah. trying to correct this as a live agent, so that the next time an, another customer asks the same question, the bot yeah. will not need your assistance. Yes? So, Baran, actually, this is a good point. Uh, at this stage, usually our customers are asking this question. The agent fixed the flow. Can the bot learn automatically? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. And there's a reason behind that. I'm going to explain. Now, the agents who are helping is may know a few flows in the you know in the dialogue but they may not be a, a good judge when it comes to fixing the entire dialogue flow mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, usually our customers they have departments who are building this uh, decision you know flow or dialogue flow and it's their job to actually find these kind of problems and then fix them agents are not actually uh, you know responsible to do this kind mm -hmm. of thing so we become like not uh, we actually provide not unsupervised uh, learning, but it's a supervised learning, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. someone has to interfere with this kind of learning. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna be doing here is that I'm the owner of this dialogue flow working mm -hmm. at the bank, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. occasionally I come to this kind of screen, it says recognition list, you know, just to see what kind of interactions are being done with my bot. So you're actually, like the supervisor who is in charge of this decision flow. That's exactly who I am right now. Mm -hmm. And instead of looking everything, I just want to look at the multiple match, you know, scenarios where, you know, uh, there are multiple matches happening in the system. So in the last month, let's take a look at how many multiple matches are happening. Uh, all right. So 124 of them happened. So there's clearly something that I need to fix. But before I jump into that, I'm going to filter it even down, uh, you know, and I'm going to say, bring me the results where a real agent, you know, a real human intervened and, you know, uh, changed the course of the conversation. Now there are only seven of them. So my job got a little easier, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm looking at this example, which is the one that we used previously in the webinar. Uh, I mean, uh, actually two minutes ago. And I see that there is, uh, this is the request coming from the customer loan application, which is 
pretty clear, but the system is giving a multiple matches. So it is matching with loan calculator and loan application menus together. So clearly I made a mistake designing my decision tree or the dialogue flow. So uh, I know these two menus are, uh, are having a problem. So now it's my time to shine and I can fix this, right? So how do I do it? So it's very easy. It's very effective and quick because as soon as I make the change, it will be live, you know, it will be uh, so real time. Yeah, real time. So this is our dialogue flow and this is how I design it. All right. So when I said loan application, just like the customer, it actually matched with loan calculator and loan application menu. So uh, mm -hmm. I start scratching my head. So loan application have the terms. That's the correct one. Uh -huh. That's the correct one. Have the terms apply and get. So, by the way, guys, if you have questions how the natural dialogue algorithm works in the background, you know, we can have another session. We can have a one to one discussion. But, you know, this is not the right time to go through details. But basically, there's a natural dialogue algorithm that works here, you know, uh, and we can enter different terms, you know, like apply or get to denote that someone is trying to get loan or to apply for a new loan. All right, so this looks correct to me, Baran, but let's take mm -hmm. a look at loan calculator. Oh, I see the error here. I think it's a copy paste error. You know, someone put calculate and inquiry in the loan calculator, which are true, but also I see apply and get terms applied into the calculator part, which are actually causing the problem. So mm -hmm. I identify the problem uh, and then I can actually get rid of these two terms, apply and get. Now, these two will be the only ones for the calculator. And then these two are, uh, two are the only ones for the application. Now, actually my changes are done. You know, it's immediately ready to be tested again. Now let's go back to our example. So I'm not agent anymore. I'm on the break. You know, I'm just going to leave my chat service alone. Okay. So start over English. I said loan application. And now the dialogue is mm -hmm. actually in the correct format, right? Mm -hmm. So it's asking me, okay, what kind of loan you are applying for? And then it takes me from there. So I fixed it. I probably spent five minutes to fixing it, you know, overall by explaining it mm -hmm. to you as well. Uh, so this is how actually it's effective and fast and quick, you know, uh, to fix these kind of problems. Again, you're a big, large enterprise. You have a lot in your, you know, conversational AI. Products. For example, bank, banks, yeah. financial institutions. Yeah, like uh, you mentioned, it's yeah. the flows are uh, like endless. Yes, it's very yeah. complicated. It's so easy to make exactly. a mistake. Yeah, look at this menu. I mean, this is just a demo system for a, uh, you know, small banking application. And even this one has, you know, a lot of things in the dialogue flow that I need to be managing from money transfer to credit cards, to password changes, you know, uh, or, you know, how much money do I have? What's my latest transactions? So I'm managing this dialogue flow here. So it's kind of normal to make mistakes here. What we are enabling here is first of all, let's go back to my uh, presentation here, guys. Okay. First of all, we are saving the day here. We are saving our brand image, right? Mm -hmm. Because our chatbot, you remember the first example, the customer quit when they were about to apply for a loan. Actually, you know, uh, with the help of seamless agents, we uh, provide, we avoid this, right? And we also avoid customers, you know, mouth of word saying, okay, word of mouth, I'm sorry, saying that, okay, this bank's chat service is rubbish. It's trash. It's not working. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we kind of uh, uh, avoid all of this kind of talk. And I'm going to be talking about a few best practices, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have to have a seamless agent, a live person monitoring the tool 24 seven for forever. Okay, this is especially important when the product goes live. The first few days, hours, or you know, maybe a week period of time is when people will come in and start trying your chat service or conversational AI service. This is the time to place those real people to monitor the conversations and to save them if necessary. And then at the end of this period, you know, it can be three days or seven days, it doesn't matter. Your analysts should sit down 
and get those reports and you know fix the flow on your dialog right just like you did like five minutes exactly. ago. exactly yeah? exactly mm -hmm. exactly so so when one when companies launch this uh, this chatbot or uh, different assistants of course they're going to have uh, a, a lot of customers engaging with it and there's going to be a learning curve mm -hmm. yeah so we are definitely. talking about definitely keeping the customer satisfied and keeping the customer experience high uh, during these critical weeks, the first weeks, the first months of a new chatbot launch for our company. This yep. is definitely a time that we need all hands on deck. So exactly. uh, this technology exactly. helps that, yeah. Definitely. So, uh, Baran, we are about to end, you know, come to an end on our webinar. Yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is just about SESTEC in case anyone is wondering, you know, we are a data-driven technology company and our, you know, solutions are all, you know, uh, cloud ready, but most of our customers, you know, they prefer on-premise, which we can also do. You know, our presence is over 300 brands. You know, the verticals are quite rich, 12 of them, you know, and uh, across 16 countries. Uh, so today at SESTEC, we are 89 people. I hope to say 90, you know, or over 90 in the next webinar, you know, operating yeah. <laughs> from two R&D centers and a sales office, you know. Uh, so that's basically it. So you're welcome to, you know, ask any questions that you may have, guys. Uh, yes, and I, I mentioned our email address. You can ask anything directed to us uh, at yeah. marketing at sestet.com. And you can, uh, again, visit our website, which is www.sestec.com. And we have our uh, resources uh, page where we actually air our recorded webinars there. Please check it out. Uh, so you can see uh, our now three webinars, uh, recordings uh, at that platform. And uh, yeah, so, any We're questions in the you. chat room, uh, Baran, that I'm not aware of? That you Actually, want to... uh, one of our participants asking about... Uh, I can't uh, the first come. question is about, so the uh, is that giving feed the intervention of the, the, the live agent? Is it giving any kind of feedback uh, to, uh, to the AI? Or AI is continuous, uh, continuing the, uh, the dialogue and then uh, supervisors can uh, uh, rearrange the flow, yes? Yes. So as I, I see the question from, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Miss Esgi. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason that we are not providing this feedback to AI is that, you know, it may not be the right answer because agents, you know, they're trying mm -hmm. to give this answer in a kind of a short time period just to save the day. But, you know, the analysts, as I did it, you know, should get those uh, reports from the recognition list and then fix the dialogue flow themselves. So that will be a feedback to the AI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we so, need some kind of supervision for that. That's why yeah. we don't give direct feedback. Actually, we and, have one more question that I'm mm -hmm. seeing from Ali. Uh, yes, Mr. Ali. Uh, actually, what you're asking, Ali is asking if we have this in place for the voice recognition issues, and we do actually have it. So uh, please give me, a little bit of time. I think we do still have two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. Uh, <laughs> all right. So it's good time. So Ali, yes, on the IVR channels or on the chatbots which are you know supporting voice, uh, you can actually enable seamless agent. And how to do that is quite easy. You know, let's. This is our uh, banking English, and from the actions you say edit. All right. So let's go to the seamless agent tab, and then uncheck this one so uh so first of all speech to text you know every time someone says okay i want to apply for a loan uh, you know in a spoken uh, version the system is going to convert this speech into text but you know while it's doing it there will be a confidence level from zero to hundred so for example if you're calling from a very noisy environment or if you're speaking in a you know an un un understandable tone the system's confidence may be low in that sense, you know, when the system doesn't trust itself, if it's got the uh, spoken phrase correctly or not, it can actually uh, route it to a live agent, to a seamless agent. And you can uh, determine the threshold here. So anything below 80%, 
you know, is going to be routed to the live agent. Anything above 80%, the system trusts itself and it's going to, you know, go ahead and do it. Uh, the AI is going to do it itself. Or you can make it 90 or even 99, you know, so that only very clear, crisp spoken phrases will be handled by AI and everything else will go to the uh, seamless agent. But be careful, you know, then all of these requests may actually a go to A lot of agents. Agent. Yeah. Yes, uh, you need a lot of agents. So yeah. I think the sweet spot is somewhere around 80 to 90%, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you can do it on the voice channels, Ali. I hope this answers mm -hmm. the question. Yeah, we can do all the same things at, 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 at voice agents also, like voice enabled yeah. IVRs and all that. Exactly. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, Anil, and thank you for our participants. Uh, so we're going to see you at our next webinar, hopefully, next month. Thank you for your time, everyone. Take care.